Hello. Me again. This is a little bit different, isn't it? No think pads, no Ubuntu, <laughs> no videos of screens doing stuff. So we have uh, government advice is to stay at home, protect the NHS, save lives. But we are allowed to go out for a walk now and then. I tried this yesterday and the route that I took, I ended up walking past a ton of people. I felt super awkward doing what I'm doing right now. This does not come naturally to me. I'm not a YouTuber. But today I've taken a different route and already I've gone past half a dozen people. So I don't think there's going to be anywhere near where I live that I can walk and not come across other human meat bags out here in the big blue room. So I'm just out for a stroll, get a bit of exercise, a bit of fresh air, get out of the house, away from the computers. And I thought I'd take you along with me. And I'll answer the obvious immediate question, which is, hey Alan, how are you recording this? <laughs> you clearly don't have a ThinkPad with you. No, that's right. Uh, so I'm just using my phone, which is uh, OnePlus 5. Uh, I have no idea what this footage is going to look like. Uh, I'm recording it at 4K and it has this stabilisation thing built in, so it might be that it's a little bit weird. As I look at it, it's jumping around all over the place. But it might be, once the video is processed, it'll end up looking semi-okay, but we shall see. This may never even get published. We just don't know. I'm using a Rode mic, which is... Uh, Quite a neat little thing that clips on the phone. Uh, it, um, it has a one of those wind muffler things on it, and that should reduce some wind noise. Although it's a pretty still day, there's not a lot of wind going on, so that's pretty nice. You can probably hear cars going by though. Next to me, there's a kind of main road. Surprising how many cars there are out and about, you know, key workers. I've seen a fair number of uh, Domino's delivery cars and, and trucks. And there are people, lots and lots of people on bikes and walking, getting their daily exercise. what to do about that. We're in public, people have no expectation of privacy when you're videoing them in public. Do I blur them out? Do I jump cut past them? Stop talking as I get close and then skip over them? I just don't know. I feel like a right plum doing this. I really do. So Alan, don't do it. Well yes, that's certainly an option. Uh, <laughs> I have the uh, phone mounted on a selfie stick. It was a freebie selfie stick I got years ago at a conference, I think. It's just a cheap and cheerful way of holding it somewhat away from my face. So I work from home anyway. So this whole lockdown stuff is not as weird as it is for some people because I've worked for home, from home for a 10 years or so so it's not unusual for me to roll out of bed do my morning ablutions grab a coffee walk up the stairs into my office and then sit there for eight hours this is normal uh, whereas I understand for many people it's very much not normal there is certainly a period of adjustment and I'm not going to be some uh, homeworking expert 
like all those people on Twitter and Medium who keep posting articles about here are the top 10 tips for homeworking. I won't do that. Don't take advice from me. It is difficult for the rest of the family though. My daughter's just left school and is in a bit of limbo, unaware what qualifications she will have because the exams were cancelled or postponed or reorganised or something, I don't know. So she's in a bit of limbo. My son is on Easter break at the moment and he's managing to level himself up at Rocket League and uh, annoy all his friends by being the best among his group at that game. So it's got to the point where nobody wants to play with him or if they do play with him they want to play 10 on 1 or something like that because uh, he thrashes them every time. So uh, it's interesting different challenges we have when we're uh, <laughs> at home. And unfortunately my wife got made redundant from her job so she's busy looking for other sources of employment which is going to be tricky because you know not a lot of people are hiring right now. I mean, there are some specific roles that obviously need more people, but, uh, yeah, not necessarily in her domain. So I guess I should kind of get on topic with this thing. Uh, last week we had the Ubuntu uh, testing week, which was a new thing. We did, Obviously we test all the time. But this was a community organised event. It was uh, Yusuf Phillips who organised this, community member who thought it would be a good idea to get all the Ubuntu flavours pulling in the same direction and uh, promoting this testing week. It worked really well. We had a whole influx of new people uh, testing out all the ISO images for all the different flavours like super fast as well and thoroughly and uh, I think it was generally a success because more people were aware of the whole process of testing and more people were doing the testing and uh, so that's good I think there's certainly improvements we could uh, we could do for next time next time perhaps we could uh, try and focus on how people feed back their test results like definitely need to make it easier to file bugs but there's a trade-off there as well if it's super easy to file bugs then you get a bazillion bugs filed and nobody's there to fix them it's a problem that a lot of open source projects have is the manpower person power for developing the project is far outweighed by the number of people who actually use it. And so Ubuntu has millions of users. Now, I'm not using that word lightly. There are millions of people who use Ubuntu directly on their desktop and on their server. And there can be frustrations when there are bugs, but there just aren't enough people skilled to resolve those issues or triage those issues and resolve them. So I think we certainly, for next time, we need to level up the contributors. Get them to a point where people are happy to triage bugs and also happy to try and fix them. Because that's ultimately what you want, is these bugs to get fixed. But that's difficult. It's a lot harder to... You know, on the levels of contribution, the easiest thing to do is to have an idea and articulate your idea. The next thing is like writing that down, and the next thing is saying that something is broken or something should be fixed. These are all pretty easy to do, but actually fixing the thing, that's a bit harder. So I think we need to level up there. We need to figure out what we do to get more people involved. I don't know if you'll notice that seamless jump cut there. <laughs> My phone only records 10 minutes of 4K video. It's a 
limitation with the camera app I'm using. Uh, so I have to stop when it gets close to 10 minutes and then start again. It's a bit weird. My very first digital camera was a Sony and uh, it took Sony memory sticks and it could record video. It had one of those um, lenses on the top that could flip over. So actually you could use it for taking what you might call selfies. I don't think we called them selfies back in 1999, 98, something like that when I had that camera. Uh, so it could record 15 seconds of video <laughs> at like 320 by 200 or something like that. Excuse a bit of pause while I let that gentleman go past. So the other on-topic thing, Ubuntu 20.04 is coming out soon, end of April, and this is the first release where my good friend and colleague Martin Wimpress is the director of desktop engineering, taking over from Will Cook, who moved on uh, last year. Will went to look at, uh, went to work for Influx Data, I think. Uh, and he's enjoying himself there. Let's still keep in touch with, with Will. Uh, but uh, Martin took over desktop and this is the first release under Martin's direction. Obviously a lot of the stuff that is in 2004 will have been planned before Martin took over. So he can't take you know, all the credit for what happened in Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is an amalgamation of many open source projects from the Linux kernel and Xorg and all the GNOME parts that we distribute and all the applications as well like Firefox and LibreOffice and, and so on. But some of the things that make Ubuntu Ubuntu, I think Martin was instrumental in driving. Uh, he organised the Yaru Design Sprint, which we had in London in January. You remember back when people could be in the same place as each other. We invited some people to come to the London office and work on the Yaru theme. Themes are a divisive thing, aren't they? Some people are vehemently against at one end of the scale and you should use the stock theme at all times. And then at the other end of the scale, you've got people who like enlightenment or some other very custom, you know, heavily modded and tricked up desktop. I think we're somewhere in between. We like to use as much of the stock upstream product as possible, but we get feedback from our users. A lot of time people seem to think that the whole branding thing is just, or sorry, the theming thing is a branding thing and the only reason we do it is to have the Ubuntu brand. That's certainly part of it. You know, the wallpaper, the colour theme. You want to be able to look across a room, see an operating system running on a machine and go, ah, look, they're using Ubuntu, and recognise it. And, you know, people do that. They do Ubuntu spotted in the wild, seen on TV programmes, or, you know, little video clips where some engineer is using a laptop in the front seat of a, an autonomous driving car and on the laptop you can see it's clearly Ubuntu. Stuff like that is nice and it's delightful to see that rather than a you know, Windows screen or a Mac screen or something else. <clears throat> so it's a bit of recognisability, a bit of branding. But it's also feedback we get from users. Uh, we've done a number of user surveys and listened to feedback we've had from users either on bug reports or forum posts or whatever. And so we tweak Ubuntu to be the way that we believe our users want it. And that's difficult sometimes. Uh, you know, we get a bit of flack for having a custom theme. Hey-ho, can't please everyone. 
I think the other thing that Martin's been driving hard is the ZFS support in 2004. It's pretty unique actually. There's not there's no other mainstream distro that uses ZFS like that. I know there are distros that you know you can enable ZFS and you can manually jump through hoops and install your system on ZFS, but I think Ubuntu is the first mainstream distro to have it built into the installer, albeit an experimental option. I switched to it when I did my video a little while ago where I did the Nuke and Pave video, which is surprisingly popular. Uh, and in it I wiped my system, I'd already done a backup, and uh, I installed Ubuntu 2004 Focal Fossa before the release and I did a root file system on ZFS and the reason for that is I quite like trying out this new stuff and uh, it's a good idea for those of us who have the capability to debug stuff and so when stuff goes wrong I can file bug reports and provide useful feedback to the developers and all that kind of stuff before the users get it in April. <laughs> Now it is, again, an experimental feature, but it's one of those things that it's going to be super useful in the future because sometimes updates go wrong or users screw their system up in some way. And the nice thing about having ZFS on the install is they'll be able to roll back easily. Something I've envied that the Mac has had for a long time is Time Machine. The ability to reinstall a system. Uh, let's go this way. Reinstall the system or restore the system to a previous state with simple tools. I think that's what we're aiming for. We're trying to get Ubuntu to the point where in the event of a disaster you can get your system working again. That's the goal, anyway. So I guess I better head back and wrap up this stroll. Do let me know if these random, uh, I'm going to say it, vlog style things are interesting to you. I'll try and keep them vaguely on topic, talk about Ubuntu and stuff, but without actually, you know, showing a laptop or anything like that. Also, let me know if the, uh, the video is uh, super frustrating. I've noticed the, um, the way that it... Uh, smooths out the the shake is a little bit weird uh, especially if you stop and swing the camera around pan around a little bit it can be a little bit jerky and a little bit weird so I'm sorry about that uh, I don't really have a better option for this kind of thing so yeah that was a little bit of a stroll lunchtime in the fresh air with the cars and the trains and the birds and the trees I hope everyone is safe and you're all well take care see you all soon